willingly or unwillingly, directly or indirectly, we eat the food grown in the same soil, drink the water from the same spring, breathe the air of the same atmosphere, even while staunchly holding our own views, it would be helpful if for no other purpose, at least to promote proper adjustments to our surroundings, if we also know to some extent how the mind of our neighbor moves and what are the main springs of his actions. From this angle of vision, it is highly desirable that one should try to know all religions of the world in the proper spirit to promote mutual understanding and better appreciation of our neighborhood immediate and remote. Further, our thoughts are not scattered as they appear to be on the surface. They have got themselves crystallized around a few nuclei in the form of great world religions and living faiths that guide and motivate the lives of millions that inhabit this earth of ours. It is our duty. In one sense, if we have the ideal of ever becoming citizens of the world before us, to make a little attempt to know the great religions and systems of philosophy that have ruled mankind. Now, gentlemen, I will talk about the Holy Prophet and his personality, a historical personality of the Prophet. In spite of these preliminary remarks, the ground in the field of religion where there is conflict between intellect and emotion is so slippery that one is constantly reminded of fools that rush in where angels fear to tread. It is also so complex from another point of view. The subject of this writing about the tenets of a religion with its historic and its prophet with its also historic personality. Even a hostile critic like Sir William Muir is speaking about the Holy Quran 200 years ago says that there is, and I quote, that there is probably in the world no other book which has remained 12 centuries with so pure a text, unquote. It may also be added that Prophet Muhammad is also a historic personality, every event of whose life has been most carefully recorded, and even the minutest details preserved intact for posterity. His life and works are not wrapped in mystery. One need not hunt for the accurate information and embark on arduous expeditions to sift the chaff and husk from the grain of truth. Volume 12, Encyclopedia Britannica says, and I quote, a mass of detail in the early sources show that he was an honest and upright man who had gained the respect and loyalty of others who were likewise honest and upright men. Muhammad is the most successful of all the prophets and religious personalities, unquote. I would now say, gentlemen, one word about the past misrepresentations about the Holy Prophet and his religion. This work is further lightened because those days are fast disappearing when Islam was highly misrepresented by some of his critics for reasons political and otherwise. Professor Beeman 
writes Cambridge Medieval History. And I quote, the account of Muhammad and Islam, which were published in Europe before the beginning of the 19th century, are now to be regarded as literary curiosities. The problem to write this monogram is easier because we are not generally fed now on this kind of history and much time need not be spent on pointing out misrepresentation of Islam. Thomas Carlyle, in his book, Heroes and Hero Worship, England, 1841, states, and I quote, the lies Western cylinder, which well-meaning zeal has heaved around this man, Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are disgraceful to ourselves only. How one man single-handedly could weld warring tribes and wandering Bedouins into most powerful and civilized nation in less than two decades? A silent great soul, one of that who can not but be earnest, he was to kindle the world, the world's maker had ordered so. The theory of Islam and sword, for instance, is not heard now frequently in any quarter worth the name. Principle of Islam, that there is no compulsion in religion, is well known. Gibbon, a historian of worldwide fame, says, and I quote, a pernicious tenet has been imputed to the Muhammadans, the duty of extirpating all the religions by the sword. This charge of ignorance and bigotry, says the eminent historian, is refuted by Quran, by the history of Muslim conquerors, and by their public and legal toleration of Christian worship. The greatest success of Muhammad's life was effected by sheer moral force without the stroke of a sword." Unquote. A.S. written in Islam, London, 1951, page 21 says, and I quote, the picture of the Muslim soldier and advancing with his sword in one hand and the Quran in the other is quite false. Be less he, O Leary, in Islam at the Crossroad, London, 1923, page 8, says, and I quote, history makes it clear, however, that the legions of fanatical Muslims sweeping through the world and forcing Islam at the point of sword upon conquered races as one of the most fantastically absurd myths that historians have ever repeated. With this, gentlemen, my first lecture comes to an end. I have tried to cover the background of the Holy Prophet. Bamar Salnaka illa rahmatallil alameen. And we send thee not, save as a mercy for all the pupils.
about the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his person, life and teachings. Today, I propose to talk to you the fundamental characteristics of Islam. Mustafa, the chosen one. who subdue their anger. Holy Quran 